Hello and welcome to the Pup Mommy, where it's all about the pups. They come first. And in this two-part series, I'll talk about the difference between adopting a pup from a breeder versus adopting from a rescue. Now, in my over 30 years of owning dogs, I've adopted dogs directly from breeders as well as the rescue route. And whether you choose the route of a breeder or the route of a rescue, do your homework first because I'll tell you, um, all breeders and all rescues are not created equal. And doing your homework first, it's better than the potential of frustration, anger, and crying three months after you've adopted the dog and spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars to do so. And I refer you to my eight-part video series, To Puppy or Not to Puppy, uh, which basically takes you through exactly what you can expect if you adopt a puppy. Now, um, in part one of the video series, I talked about the major video di the differences between breeders and rescues um, that fall into different categories. And we talked about the expense, the availability of the dog, as well as the adoption and buying process. In part two of the video, we're now going to go through the health, the temperament, the warranty that you may get, as well as the return and surrender policy. So let's get started. Now, in category four, what the health of the dog. What can you expect from going to a breeder versus getting a pup from a rescue? When you go to a reputable breeder, as I mentioned earlier, you're going there for specific reasons, including knowing that the breeder knows about, of course, and has taken all the possible precautions against genetic disorders that can afflict their breed of dog. Breeders spend a lot of money testing their dogs and puppies to ensure that they meet OFA certification for diseases that are common to their breed. Now, OFA is Orthopedic Foundation of America, and I'll leave a link in the description section of this uh, video. Um, OFA certified basically means that the breeder has had the appropriate tests run um, on the parents prior to breeding, and that the pups have a clean health history of known of no known generic have a clean health history of no known degenerative illnesses, disorders, orthopedic issues, cardio or eye issues that are commonly associated with the breed. But I want to be very specific and very upfront with you because dogs and puppies are like humans. You can have healthy parents, you can have negative tests, and a pup still will come down with an ailment three, four years down the line like hip dysplasia or intervertebral disc disease. I mean, it happens. Reputable breeders are usually very careful uh, about how frequently they breed their dogs, along with who they breed with. Puppies coming from these breeders will have their initial set of shots, along with certification from a veterinarian who has examined the pup before the pup is adopted out to you, and it usually is about a couple days or the day of or, or whatever, that they'll take the pup to the, to the vet and get that certification. The pedigree of the pup in question usually includes the lineage that can easily be confirmed in the pedigree database and also online uh, searches via AKC, registration numbers of the parents, the grandparents, and the great-grandparents. When you go to a rescue, unless it's an owner surrender, uh, and that owner has brought the pup's paperwork with them, you generally have no way of knowing the dog's medical history. Dogs on intake to a rescue are examined by the rescue's designated vet, and dogs that are not ready for adoption, either because they tested heartworm positive or they have a different ailment that needs to be treated, they will be put on hold and not shown or adopted out until the vet signs off with their approval. Now, when a dog is ready to be adopted, uh, many rescues will give you an adoption kit and it will be detailing all of the pup's medical history that they know of while the pup has been in their possession. 
including vaccinations, including spay-neuter info, of course, if the dog is old enough. So bottom line, health costs, veterinary costs, are one of the top three costs that you will have with a dog during its lifetime. It's right up there with food. It's right up there with the cost of the dog. Now, with a breeder, you're going to know the pup's medical history going back generations. With a rescue, you only know about the pup's history along with its evaluation and paperwork from a vet, from a foster. Um, and if you're fortunate enough, you'll have the paperwork from an owner surrender. You need to decide how important this ranks in your determination as to whether to go to rescue or whether to go to a breeder. Because I will tell you, and again, in personal experience, over 30 years of owning dogs, veterinary costs can be thousands and thousands of dollars. And again, it depends if you're willing to spend that thousands of dollars, but it can mount to that. Category number five, temperament. What can you expect for temperament in terms of breeders versus rescue? And I will say for, for breeders, temperament is right up there like health as a vital component to their breeding programs. You will rarely, not 100% guarantee, nothing is 100% guarantee, but you will rarely get a pup from a breeder who is wonky or weird. Reputable breeders have a, have a, a reputation to maintain, but just as importantly too, they are breeding for the love of the breed. Now, can a dog be, still be strange or have other issues coming from a reputable breeder? Uh, yes, yes. The answer is yes. Been there, been there. Um, I had that happen to me with my female Doberman, who was high strung, very reactive. I had a male Boston Terrier from a champion bloodline, from a champion breeder, which is a subject for another, another video. Um, but I can tell you that no matter how hard a breeder tries to maintain or tries to breed sound dogs, uh, they're just like with people, there's going to every now and then be a strain of a DNA from several generations, it skips several generations, it skips several genes, and then it just finds its way into a particular litter and a particular dog. And you get a dog that's a little wonky, uh, maybe high strung or hyper or reactive, or prone to illness. So, um, reputable breeders, I will say also, um, know their line of dogs, and they are very careful that they don't inline breed because that's very similar to incestuous relationships. So they can only go by their judgment and the network of breeders that they go to for their dogs for mating purposes or when they receive dogs on their premises for mating. Now, if you decide on a particular breeder in normal times, um, when you would, let's say, go to pick up your puppy, um, you usually would vis visit the, the breeder's facility and premises. And in that case, you would be able to view or meet the pup's siblings if they've not been adapted out. Or you would probably be able to meet the parents, uh, the grand and maybe even the grandparents, or because I will tell you, I, this, is, this also is something that I have done. Reputable breeders should not have a problem with this. Um, when I picked up my little German Shepherd, Olympia, from a breeder 12 years ago, I took my other German Shepherd, Zarina, with me. And, we were, and Zarina was able to get out and mingle with the other Shepherds very safely, very, did very well. Well, I was given a tour of the premises and I met Olympia's mother, father, sister, and grandfather, and was able to pet them, touch them, interact with them. This, this is the way it should be. I mean, breeders, remember breeders are, are very proud of their dogs and they want to show them to you and they, and they want you to feel comfortable with them and know what, where your pup has come from and what kind of, what kind of situation and in, in terms of the temperament and, and everything else and how they were, the, the premises and how clean and everything else is. Now in these COVID times, every step is questionable and you just, you know, it just is going to depend on your own personal comfort and safety as well as the breeder. Um, if you decide to get your pup from a rescue, then the temperament issue becomes a little bit more important. 
Many dogs at a rescue can either be owner surrender, they can be strays, they could be dogs that come from high kill shelters. If the pup is owner surrendered, well, the form that, that's, that they're surrendered with will usually contain information about the pup's living conditions, about how it reacted with other dogs, with other pets, with children, and you get an overall general um, assessment of its temperament. But also these dogs are temperament tested as well by the rescue, and they're observed over a period of time. So that, you know, no rescues will not put a dog up for adoption that is not deemed safe. And some dogs will have issues, such as resource gardening, um, not good with small children, should be an only dog. But this is also, again, based on the assessment of the foster, of the rescue. And it's also up front in the description of the dog uh, on, the, on the rescue's site. So it is also equally important for you as the adopter to make sure that you're asking the right questions, either of the breeder or of the rescue. Because remember that this dog is going to be living with you in your home and you have to be comfortable with it. Temperament in a dog is very, very important. Don't underestimate this. Again, it's, it's adopting a pup is a balancing act between the head, the heart, and your instincts. It's difficult to keep them all balanced, but you've got to try. You know, it's one thing if you've got a little Bichon or a little Terrier that's nasty and that you have to worry about. It's quite another if you've got an 85-pound Doberman or you have a 140-pound Great Dane and it ain't working out. Nothing is 100% guaranteed. Um, whether from a breeder or a rescue. My Noel um, came from a rescue and he had a wonderful temperament. Little destructive early on when he was much younger, but he grew out of that. But he had a wonderful temperament, whereas my Doberman came from a reputable breeder and was a handful. Now, my German Shepherd Nabucco, I am the fourth, his fourth owner in seven months. And this is what I mean when you get in over your head and you don't know what you're doing and you get the wrong dog. But he's found his forever home and I have not had a moment's trouble with him. So if your budget and, your heart, and or your heart dictates that you go to a rescue, take your time, listen to the evaluation of people who have been around the pup. And keep in mind that some rescues have to keep their dogs kenneled until fosters are available. And kenneling in, in, is, is very stressful for the dog. Some have been abandoned by the only family they've ever known. Others get lost and they can't find their person again. Others have a history of abuse. So view each pup independent of the other and give, each, you know, you give it a fair assessment when adopting. So we're almost there. Category number six, warranty, guarantee. Reputable breeders, include a limited warranty, a guarantee on their pups that they've been OFA tested and uh, that they're disease free when they've been adopted out to you. But if a pup is adopted out, the, again, the pup undergoes a, an exam by the breeder's vet, gets a certification, the certification accompanies the pup to its no owner. But also keep in mind, whether you get the dog from a rescue, you get it from a breeder, you should take the dog to your veterinarian within 48 hours of its adoption because some breeders will offer a replacement for a pup who has an illness or an issue that was not caught by them or their veterinarian. Um, others may offer some compensation. Um, other breeders also will offer you a guarantee or a warranty of let's say five years from date of purchase that they will replace the dog uh, if it comes down with hip dysplasia or comes, out, comes down with some other disease that they couldn't have foreseen. So again, you have to go to the breeder's website, you have to read the fine print in the contract of sale and, and or adoption. Same thing with a rescue. You basically, when you're going to a rescue, you're adopting the pup as is. You get the medical paperwork that they have on file with the pup when it was surrendered or that they have while the pup has been in their organization. Now, for some rescues, they have, spot, they have pups with special needs. Um, but these rescues are, for the most part, very upfront about what those needs are. 
and therefore it's up to you to determine whether you love, have enough love and want the pup enough and have enough experience with caring for a pup with special needs. And this is something that you and the rescue um, are going to have to determine. Um, because it's one thing to love the pup and keep it warm and safe, but if you don't know how to care for its special needs, it, 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 can, be, it can be rough on both you and the pup. So bottom line, depending what your budget is and your overall experience with the rescue, um, and the, the pup you choose, this it, it could be the be better route for you. Um, if spending thousands of dollars for a puppy or a dog, you really need to you, you really need to if, read the fine print. But again, spending thousands of dollars for a dog only to find out later um, where something goes wrong with the dog, and then you're spending thousands of dollars on a veterinarian. Um, my chipper, my Boston Terrier, came from a champion bloodline and a breeder of incredible integrity. Uh, yet over his 12 year period with me, I kid you not, I spent over $15,000 on, on, on veterinary bills. Um, Chip was a mast cell tumor magnet. And during his 12 years, uh, especially the last 18 months of his life, uh, he needed corneal surgery. Uh, he developed a benign tumor known as a chemodectoma. Uh, and the, but it was finally the brain tumor, the glioma, that ended his life. But, you know, again, they become so much a part of your life and so much... Anyway, we need to go on and finish this video. I do. Category number seven, the final one. Return and surrender policy. In my experience, reputable breeders will take a dog back if the owner dies or becomes mentally or physically incapacitated and can no longer care for the dog and there's no one else to care for it. Um, it is up to you, the adopted parent, to confirm that with the breeder and hopefully get it in writing. Um, the breeder is not going to pay you for the dog, is not going to reimburse you your adoption costs. They are taking the dog back merely because um, they don't want the dog to end up in a shelter or abandoned. Breeders very rarely will take a, a dog back because of buyer's remorse. However, some breeders just so love their dogs that they will take the pup back and or help you rehome the dog to find a better solution. But it is up to you in this case that, you keep, that if you develop a problem with the dog or there is a problem, that you keep the breeder fully informed as to what is going on with the pup and the steps that you're taking to correct the situation and improve the situation. For pups that are adopted through a rescue, there's usually a clause in the adoption paperwork that the pup may, must be returned to the rescue for whatever reason. Uh, even not working out, whatever reason, again, they'll take it back. Um, rescues, though, like breeders, will not refund your adoption fee. So bottom line, breeders may or may not take the dog back Rescues will accept the pup back normally under any circumstances. So if you're really, really unsure as to whether you want a dog, what kind of dog you got, you're unoverwhelmed, you didn't know how much work the dog was going to be, for whatever reason, rescue route may be the better route to, to go. Again, totally up to you. And so that's it for this very long video. Should you need any assistance in finding the right pup for you or your family, um, I leave my, I, I, I will leave, I, I left. <laughs> See how long? Um, I have left my contact information in the uh, description section. Um, thank you for staying with me. I hope I was able to help you make a decision whether to what route to go. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, again, thank you for watching the video, and don't forget to click the subscribe button. See you around for the next one.